I'm Associate Professor Peter Stapleton from Bond University in Australia and I'd like to share with you the latest EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques or Tapping Research and really what's coming out of the research world. Now tapping or EFT as a psychophysiological technique, so one that we use that certainly borrows from other gold standard approaches such as cognitive therapy, but with the addition of exposure therapy and a body-based stress reduction technique, now has a growing database. So more than 320 publications and certainly many of them over 29 in that gold standard approach, which could be meta-analysis or systematic review, another 65 plus of randomized clinical trials, which certainly is a gold standard in the research world. And of course, many case studies as well as pre and post cohort studies have been emerging. In addition to these 320 studies, there's over another 100 papers that are actually published in peer reviewed journals, but in non-English journals. So they're coming out of countries such as Malaysia, Iran, Iraq, uh, South Korea and using variations of EFT that are appropriate to the cultural community where they're running their research. Now of the 320 studies that have been published in the field of energy psychology of which EFT is the most studied, 99% of those studies indeed show the scientific evidence of the technique. So we have been collecting and developing the research in this area at a worldwide level. And of course, here in Australia, I lead some of that research. Not only do we have that building bank of research that shows EFT actually can get subjective outcomes. So when our participants in the trials actually fill out their self-report questionnaires, they will describe a reduction in a stress sensation or an improvement in certain symptomology. But we actually have biological studies in the area of DNA, testing, EEG, functional MRIs that actually show we profoundly have a physiological impact. And this particular webinar is outlining why we know this works today and where we're at with that. So energy psychology is both in the top 10% of published research for psychotherapy modalities. You might actually know there's over 600 types of psychotherapy and energy psychology is in the top 10% there. But it's always been the question, how does this tapping technique work? If we're tapping on what's known as an acupuncture point in the body, what's the mechanism of change? And it's been exciting to watch this field in the last five to 10 years grow. Now, historically, we've actually had this information available to us. And if you're unfamiliar with EFT, you might not know it's actually been around for about 50 years. So it's certainly been in the research field for the last 20 years. but 50 years ago, this was actually being taught at workshop level around the world. And how it was actually explained was that there's a meridian system. So if you've ever been off to the acupuncturist's office and you've seen those charts of the body that show the lines running through them, there was some belief system around that that meridian system, which has all the acupuncture points on it, was an energy system. And so EFT explained itself as being if we tap on an acupuncture point instead of using a fine needle, then we're doing something to disrupt or interrupt the energy flow in the body. And often a TV set with static was often used as the analogy there. But we have come a long way. We certainly now have brain scan studies. There are four brain scan studies, two of which I've led here in Australia that looked at food craving exposure in that functional MRI. And then after a four week EFT program, the signal there looking at those food craving images uh, was completely non-existent. The other study that I led here in Australia was in the chronic pain research that we do know that pain impact impact in the brain is quite noticeable. We know areas such as catastrophizing and magnifying pain 
can spread when a chronic pain patient has had that pain for a very long time. And after a six week program of EFT, those same patients had an appropriate area of the brain that looked like a non-chronic pain patient. So of course we need pain to be present in the brain if indeed we hurt ourselves. So if I kick my toe, I'm gonna to perceive pain. But whether or not it actually becomes chronic pain is my ability to actually shift gears there in the brain and be able to not have it be my present front of mind for the next six weeks of my life, that pain in my toe. So our chronic pain patients six weeks later actually looked like that. So it was a fabulous outcome. Other studies have been done in terms of fear of flying and certainly looking at images that create very strong sensations and using tapping to reduce those. So 5,000 years ago, of course, you know, our Eastern uh, philosophies and the Chinese did have that meridian system, and that was the forefront of where we are today. It is the basis for modern acupressure and acupuncture, but an obstacle even to the acupuncture field has always been but does this meridian system actually exist? Uh, there have been over 65 studies published in the acupuncture versus sham acupuncture or non-identified acupoints. Studies that have published that truly show it's the acupuncture points that get the outcomes, whether that's for a health benefit or stress reduction or whatever the condition was. And we've had that done in the EFT world too. So six dismantling studies that used other substitutes instead of tapping on the points that could have been uh, deep breathing it could have been tapping on sham acupuncture points still showed that the traditional recipe of clinical eft tapping on known acupuncture points was indeed the active uh, the active ingredient there so there was a study done in 2017 called the acupuncture project that looked at 13 thousand studies and 122 medical and psychiatric conditions for acupuncture. And it actually did show that out of all of those studies, 122, only five didn't show any effect. And indeed for the other 117, acupuncture had the effect that was intended. So certainly that research has been growing. Still brings us back to, but how does this work? So in the 1960s, Professor Kim in Korea at a university appeared to identify some sort of vascular system in uh, the animals that he was working with. He was able to stain that vascular system with a tracer dye and was able to show there appears to be something physical. Now, other researchers at the time appeared tried to replicate this research but couldn't and so it actually got shelved if you like in the research world and forgotten about a little bit. Fast forward to 2020, 21, and researchers decided again in Korea to revive that research and have a look at it again and indeed used human subjects in their research and actually were able to find through ultrasound an 80% correspondence between acupoints and the body's connective tissues. So there appeared to be something physical there and it was correct about 80% according to those charts that you might see if you go off to the acupuncturist's office. It suggested there was actually some relationship here between the body's connective tissues, acupuncture points, and that perhaps there was some mechanism there that was able to carry a, a signal when that acupuncture point was actually uh, either tapped or a needle was actually placed into it. So in 2021, tracer dyes were able to be used to inject into that system, that vascular system that they had identified and found that the alignment of the acupuncture points according to the meridian charts was incredibly close. And it did in support that this meridian system was indeed a physical vascular system or a concrete duct system. Now I do have in this webinar, some slides coming up from surgery where they were able to stain these uh, vascular system and show you so if for whatever reason you're a little bit squirmish I'll let you know when to open your eyes. So you can actually see through a range of these different slides that are published in the peer-reviewed journals that they indeed show 
Uh, there, it's quite a minute system and when you inject it with dye you can actually see the coagulation around a known vascular point, an acupoint, an acupuncture point. So you can actually see that it's often a little bit bigger along that uh, meridian line. So we've actually now got an underlying mechanism for why Harvard University some years ago in, ten, in a 10 year study showed that tapping, putting a needle into an acupuncture point sends a deactivating signal to the amygdala, that known stress center in the brain. So they showed that through a multitude of different brain scanning studies and said there is indeed something happening here, but we now know there's a reason. So all of that primovascular system, as it's now termed, is running through the body and indeed up into the brain. So by stimulating a known acupuncture point, you indeed are actually having a physiological effect on the body. So the mechanism of actually putting a needle in or indeed tapping is actually being converted into an electrical signal. Um, mechosensory transduction is the phrase that's actually used there. When we focus our mind on what we're saying, that we're trying to reduce in tapping. So when we're being truthful to ourselves and saying, I feel stressed while I do my tapping, then that tapping signal is converted into that physical electrical signal that's able to then be transmitted. And collagen is suggested to be the transmitter along that primovascular system. So we actually now have a much greater understanding well and truly beyond what when 20 years ago I became involved in the research in this field that really is telling us what's actually happening here when we do tapping or indeed have acupuncture and why we're actually getting some sort of outcome, not only in self-report psychological symptoms, but indeed physical symptoms at that biochemistry level. So we know that the amygdala is able to respond. Certainly things like the hippocampus, the memory center in the brain is able to respond as well. We know through comparison studies to gold standard therapies such as cognitive behavioral therapy and indeed things like EMDR, the eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy, that their EFT is comparable. It is often able to achieve the same outcomes, but in half the time. And some of that is now attributed to the fact that we are physically and very quickly sending a signal back to the brain. What does this mean for you? Certainly I would learn more about this. I would walk away knowing that it's not about shifting energy in the body. That is a very outdated understanding of EFT. If you're a practitioner and certainly using EFT or curious about it and you share information about how it works, I would update that knowledge to include this type of thing the primovascular system and the research that goes with it. And certainly if anything is reflected on your website, I would absolutely update that as well. So I hope this has given you a greater understanding of what's actually happening now in EFT. We certainly have other understanding of why it lasts so long over time and memory reconsolidation as a theory has actually explained some of that for us. So I hope that this has added something perhaps been of interest and and that maybe you'll want to learn a little bit more about EFT and the primovascular system and just the positive impacts it may be able to do for you or your clients.